right, well, now that we have imparted that information, let's get to the last segment of the program, otherwise known as the SmackDown Review, as the bloodline turns. When last we left the citizens of Crabwell Falls, Jimmy Uso and Jey Uso were on the outs. It's... <laughs> This whole program, we're basically going to talk about what the Bloodline did and then mention matches in between because they didn't take long and they weren't that interesting. But they've got, they've got this thing again where people are now trying to figure out, as we are too, because to be honest, if you put this all together and probably watched a compilation of it every week, there's probably many loopholes you'd see, but they've spread it out enough that we can't really keep track of who the fuck's on whose side, right? It's a who done it or who will do it. And they recapped the last um the bloodline blow up at the thousand day celebration and then opened up with Paul and Solo in the ring. But before Paul could even finish introducing himself, I'm sure there's several people in the audience still have questions over what his name is. Immediately, Jay comes out by himself. Boom. And Jay starts giving Solo a raft of shit for turning on their brother and tells Paul Lee to say, tell it, whatever you got to say to me, say it. And Paul's first word, you got this all wrong. <laughs> Paul is so entertainingly slimy, is he not? In real life or on TV? Well, no, it, 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 I don't know how entertaining it is in real life, but on TV, he's just entertainingly slimy. He's the con man, just wonderfully smarmy when he's trying to, you know, pitch you, sell you the used car, right? It's all Jimmy's fault because Jimmy made up his mind for you too. And he, he moves solo back and he, speaks to Jay intimately and he that Jimmy's always done his own thing and he's resented you because Jimmy knows that Roman wants to make you the next tribal chief. It was never going to be Jimmy. He was the older brother, but it's never going to be Jimmy. It's all going to be about you. And to prove that tonight, I've got you a match where you're going to face Austin theory for the U S title to bring blood, go blood to the gold mine. That's what they're the gold mine. <laughs> they're going to bring gold to the bloodline. But wouldn't that be good on AEW? They could bring blood to the gold mine. Or mud to the bloodline. Well, or, one or the other. They can bring something. But anyway, basically, the story is that if Jay wins the U.S. title, then Roman Reigns will, and this was a quote, publicly groom him. I guess he's going to wash his ass like they do in the, you know, Japanese young boys, maybe comb his hair, trim it, style his beard. He's going to publicly groom him to become the next tribal chief. But he needs the answer now. And Jay's thinking and thinking, 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 man. And Paul, uh, you know, he says, I'll take you up on, on that uh, U.S. title match. And Paul offers his hand. <laughs> And the fans start screaming, don't shake it, don't shake it. So Jay looks at him and milks it and says, I'll get back to you on that handshake. And he walks off and Paul stays like, he's pissed now. Oh boy, left him hanging. So that was the first segment. And now we know that there's something to stay tuned for. Something's going to happen. So they, and as long as they're going to tease it, which they are, they pretty much decided on this program, that was all we needed. And they may have been right, because as uh, the fast nationals, as they say, they were up against the big NBA game and still did an average of, what, 2.4 something million viewers. Uh, after that was the Money in the Bank qualifier with Muhammad Ali and Pablo Escobar. Did you watch any of that? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't let you say anything about the promo. Yeah, I'll talk about that match in a second. I just want to say, I mean, I don't have anything to add to the promo, but we're talking about the ratings. I guess the other big story, and maybe we can address it further when we have some numbers, maybe on the drive through or next week, the shows are all drawing. Like, they're selling out buildings. It's a yeah. hot thing to be there for. I don't know if they've had anything like that 
in a long time, especially if it's not really match based and it's not, where people just want to be there to be a part of this because this is happening. I agree. And at those prices, if you got to pay the equivalent of a monthly rent on an apartment to go to a wrestling show, you might as well go to the ones doing all the big ratings, has all the big stars, right? And you want to be able to say, I was there the night that Jey Uso did this to Jimmy Uso, or this person did this to Roman Reigns. It's not about, I saw this match. It's, I saw Sammy crack up Jey Uso. I want to be there to see Roman groom Jay. I don't want to be around that. Why do you want to see that? Well, maybe they'll use Manscaped. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> so see, we're going to get those. What a beautiful way to incorporate the sponsor into the show. <laughs> so, well, I wish they were scheduled for this program, but <laughs> you'll remember them in your hearts, folks. We'll have an update on, on them probably by next week. But anyway, 